This tutorial will help you simulate and analyze any type of dental implant in the jawbone and will compare the mechanical behavior of two different types of implant screw threads. Welcome to another session of Abacus Tutorials by Hyperlysim Team. This video was made by Saman Hosseini and narrated by Kusha Puramedani. I'm going to discuss two different approaches in simulating dental implants in Abacus. Let's quickly go over the subjects covered in this video. First, I'm going to create the models for the implant, bone, and the superstructure on top of the implant. Then, I will define contact, boundary conditions, and applied force for each part and complete the modeling by meshing the parts. When we have covered all these steps for one implant, then I will create a second implant with a different thread using the already modeled one. Finally, after getting the model's results, I will compare them together and discuss them in relation to one another. Here we have the thread parameters and the dimensions of the implant. The standards detail have been chosen from the literature to design biomechanical screws. Here you can see the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio of different materials we're gonna use in this simulation. Now we move on to the software and begin with modeling the implant and its abutment. In the part module, click on the create part button. Name the part implant 1 and select 3D, deformable, solid and revolution as its features. Then, type in 45 for its approximate size and proceed with the designing process. At first, we're gonna draw the lines and enter the dimensions. The section we are drawing is the implant and its abutment. Its radius is 2 mm and the length and thickness of its edge are 0.7 and 2 mm. The height of the abutment's head and the total height of the implant are also 3.5 and 15.5 mm. Finally, apply a fillet at the bottom of the component with a 0.3 mm radius and proceed with rotating this gauge for 360 degrees. The implant and the abutment model have successfully been created now. Next, we have to create the implant screw thread. First, we select the plane that we want to draw the sketch on. Then, select the revolve tool which helps us to create the threads. Draw a vertical line and then draw three other lines so you would have the shape of a single thread. The thickness of each thread is equal to 0.1 mm and its height is equal to 0.4. Set the angles at 10 degrees and place the thread sketch at the 0.07 mm distance from the fillet we applied earlier to the implant, close to the surface of it. Note that these numbers are based on the table you saw at the beginning of the video. Select Done and in the next step, type 3350 for the angle and 0.95 for the pitch. The next step would be creating the cap which gonna serve as the tooth crown. Name the new part superstructure and use the same settings we used for the implant. Draw the profile for the cap as shown and set its dimensions in accordance with the design abutment. Then rotate this gauge for 360 degrees. Now we have come to creating the final piece, the mandible bone. This is actually the jawbone the implant is gonna end up in. Click on the create part button and name it mandible bone. We're gonna create this part using the extrusion technique. To draw the profile of the part, first define these 12 points in the X, Y plane. Then connect the top two points with a straight line and use the spline tool for connecting the rest of them. Your final profile has to look like this. Then set the depth of the part at 20 mm. The mandible bone model is not finished yet. We have to create 1.5 mm offset from the surface. This is to separate the cortical and the spongy bone parts from each other. As you can see here, the current model is almost similar to the one in this paper. You can also find the part files on our website at hyperlysium.com. Let's move on to defining the materials. To start with, create a partition as shown.
then go to the property module and define the materials that were mentioned at the beginning of the video. For example, for titanium alloy in the mechanical tab, find the elastic properties under the elasticity and type in its respective Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. Then do the same for ceramic, spongy and cortical bone materials. After defining the materials, we have to assign them to the parts, but first we have to define sections for each component, especially since two of them are composed of separate parts with different materials. Select Implant 1 in the Property module, click on the Create Section button and name it Implant. The category and type must be solid and homogeneous, then continue with choosing Titanium Alloy as Sections Material and select the region you want the material being applied to. Repeat the same steps for assigning cortical and spongy bone materials to the relevant part in the mandible bone model and again for ceramic to the superstructure model. It's time to assemble the parts together now. Move to the assembly module and add mandible bone and implant models. You can also change the colors to a preference if you want to. Make sure that you select the auto offset option when doing so. Now assemble them together in the way that the abutment sits on the flat surface of the mandible bone. Then add the superstructure to the assembly and place it over the abutment. We still have to extract the implant from the mandible bone by using the Merge Card tool from the Instances menu. After that, we have completed our assembly and you can see that all parts have been put together. Now we've come to the next stage, which is defining the boundary condition and applied force. First, we have to define the step. Change the module to step and click on the Create Step button and choose Static General as the procedure type. Make sure that the NLGOM option in the Basic tab is clicked off and move to the Incrimination tab to change the settings in accordance with the ones shown in the video. Then click on the History Outputs Request Manager and disable the step there. We are finished with defining the step, but if you are interested in learning more about this subject, you can find more information in the attached video right here on top or the link in the description. Now we define the interactions between the components. First, change the module to interaction and click on this button to define a reference point. This point will be used for coupling features. Next, click on the Create Constraint button and define a coupling between the RP-1 point and the surface of the cap. Then define a tie constraint between the abutment and the superstructure. The tie constraints assume there is a strong contact between two surfaces and are helpful for the applications that we need to make sure the two components are attached together. For this purpose, I use the Hide feature so I can select the surfaces I want. Make sure that you have chosen the superstructure as the slave contact and the other one as the master. For more information, you can visit the video being displayed in the corner of the screen or go to the link in the description. To simplify defining the contacts, I use the general contact interaction tool. For properties, I use the friction coefficient of 0.3. The next step would be defining the boundary conditions and loadings themselves. Change the module to load and click on Create Boundary Condition button. The bottom part of the bone is completely fixed and as a result we have to apply a force of 200 newtons to the reference point. In order to have convergency in the results, we need to define an amplitude for explicit analysis. I suggest we use Smooth Step as it's recommended in Abacus documentation. Use the values shown in the video for this part. This means that the load will increase from 0 to the defined value of 200 newtons over the course of the simulation. After finishing defining the boundary condition loads, we have to mesh our model. 
use linear tit elements for all parts. We can assign the seeds with the approximate element size of half millimeters and global size of 1.2. Next, proceed with the meshing of the part. For the implant and abutment parts, repeat the same steps but change the approximate element size and global size to 0.2 and 0.3 mm respectively. Note that all elements are linear here. For meshing the superstructure part, we should make partitions first. Define two partitions here in order to be able to use the hex element. As you can see, the color is changed from orange to yellow and green, indicating that we can use the element. After defining the partitions, the rest of the meshing process is similar to the other parts with a global element size of 0.3 mm. Now that all parts have been successfully meshed, we can move on to submitting the job. But before that, I want to create the second model, in which I would change the thread profile based on the table you saw at the beginning of the video. Change the height of the thread from 0.4 to 0.5 mm and its thickness from 0.1 to 0.2, then change the angles to 30 degrees. Now that we have a different profile, there are some changes that we must make including changing the angle size and the pitch to 2801.1. And Follow that with extracting the implant from the bone and adjusting the abutment to fit the implant. Make sure that you go through the same steps we went through earlier for all the changed parts and assemble them together so we could compare the results. These steps include using merge cut option to define the hole in tooth, boundary conditions for the new geometries and meshing the parts. If you don't want to go through that, you can also find the files on our website at hyperlysim.com. After submitting both models, define a job for both assemblies and start the analysis. You can observe the animation as the analysis is taking place. In order to have a better view of the process, activate the soft edges option in the visualization module and change the value of the formation scale factor to 1. As you can see, the maximum stress in the model 1 is 42.4 MPa, while the maximum stress in the second model is 45.3 MPa, which shows the difference between these two thread types. On the other hand, by checking the stress in the superstructure in both models, we find out that the magnitude of stress in both models is really close to each other. The magnitude of stress in the implant from model 1 is 42.5 MPa, and smaller than the stress in model 2, which is 45.3. Finally, the maximum stress in the mandible bone model 1 and 2 are 9.2 and 12.3 MPa, and it can be concluded that the abutment number 2 has created more stress in the mandible bone. The distribution of stress in the cortical and spongy bone models can also be easily observed. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed this session. If you had any questions or problems in modeling these parts, please let us know using the Q&A on our website or the comments to this video. Until the next time, have a good time. This video was made by Salman Hosseini. To find his contact information and his updated resume, please visit our website hyperlyceum.com. Salman is an expert in abacus, dreamatics, mimics, solidworks, ketia, and a few other engineering software. To plan online sessions and discuss industrial and academic projects, please use the provided email under Salman's contacts. The cost of the projects vary depending on the complexity of the work and can be discussed in advance. We look forward to working with you.